Did you know, within the human brain, there are approximately 100 billion neurons, approximately 1 trillion glial cells, and approximately 1 quadrillion synapses? The neural impulses being communicated can reach up to 250 miles per hour. And with over 100 different neurotransmitters, the total number of action potentials being transmitted in the brain is up to 20 quadrillion times per second, an almost unimaginable number. This communication system is what produces our thoughts and creativity, how we're feeling on any given day. It controls our energy level, appetite, sleep, sex drive, and a host of other physiological and psychological factors. But at certain times in life, this amazingly complex communication system can become disrupted by stress, disease, toxins in our environment, lifestyle factors, use of certain drugs, and genetic predispositions. An important question to ask is, how can the system be restored to more optimal function? This question is something we're asked frequently at our medical center. So, we wanted to produce this video to help give you some information about the work that we do. This is going to be fairly in-depth with quite a bit of technical information. It's about a serious subject that is often overlooked, the brain. In this video, we're going to talk about how to optimize brain health. The reason we say optimize, not treat or fix, is because we do this non-invasively and without the use of drugs. Also, we're not assuming that the brain is broken or needs to be repaired by an outside force. Rather, we're wanting to give the brain a way to optimize itself. We use a technology called brainwave optimization. It's an electroencephalographic, or EEG, technology. This means that we use EEG sensors to collect data on how the brain is processing information. But whereas traditional EEGs can only analyze seven bands of data, with brainwave optimization, we can examine over 48,000 bands of data. Practically speaking, that's like looking at something through a regular pair of glasses compared to a high-powered microscope. In terms of resolution or clarity of picture, it's like taking a photo on a camera with a nice lens compared to an inexpensive cell phone camera. This means that we're collecting very accurate data. The data collected from the brain is mapped out, according to the frequency, on a series of graphs. Brain activity is measured in microvolts on the left axis. The yellow line that you see represents the amount of activity in the person's left hemisphere of the brain while the red line represents the amount of activity in the right hemisphere. Finally, the purple line is a measure of coherence, or a level of synchronicity between the two hemispheres. Speaking broadly, there are three basic components for a healthy brain. First of all, we want to see the two hemispheres of the brain in balance with each other. That means we want to see those red and yellow lines perfectly on top of each other. Another aspect that we need to consider is something called harmony. Harmony is what you might think of as the level of synchronization or proportionation of activity between the different lobes of the brain. For example, here's a depiction of a graph of the brain's lower frequencies, showing just the frontal and temporal lobes. The red and yellow lines here are perfectly balanced to each other, meaning that we have a good balance between hemispheres. However, in these lower frequencies, there's supposed to be more activity in the temporal lobes than in the frontal lobes, not the other way around. So, we would say that these lobes are out of harmony with each other. We always want to see greater brain activity in higher frequencies in the front parts of the brain. And, conversely, we want to see greater activity in the lower frequencies in the back of the brain. Finally, there's one more component called coherence, which is related to how well the two brain hemispheres are in sync with each other. Coherence is literally how well two lines are tracking with each other. You can see that the two lines can be balanced because they're roughly at the same amplitude. 
but they're not coherent at all. Whereas two hemispheres can be very unbalanced, but can actually have a high coherence. A certain threshold of coherence is important for good quality sleep and other brain functions. We utilize brainwave optimization to help address these problems regarding balance, harmony, and coherence in the brain. This technology works by taking the recorded brain frequencies and converting those frequencies into sound. In much the same way that your car's radio will transform radio waves into sound, brainwave optimization literally takes the brain waves that are recorded, turns those into sound, and then plays them back for a person to listen to. Patients often ask, what does brainwave optimization feel like? And I would say the first thing that people notice is a substantial improvement in their quality of sleep. Our patients often start out by saying that they're remembering their dreams, sleeping more soundly, and feeling well rested. After seeing us for several sessions, people report next feeling more calm and focused. They tend to start performing faster at work, more efficiently, and start to have fewer physical complaints. Things that used to seem stressful aren't as mentally taxing. Anxious thoughts frequently start to fade away. At our clinic, we have noticed that when the brain is balanced, the person can more easily focus on the present and discover the best way to tackle the task at hand. The assessment involves placing two electrodes on the ears, two sensors on either side of the head, and a grounding sensor is placed in the middle on top of the head. Six areas of the brain are scanned, including frontal lobes, central strip, temporal lobes, parietal, and occipital lobes. While we cannot draw definitive diagnosis based on these assessments, we usually see correlations between the data and symptoms that people feel. For example, in adults, we usually see that the low amplitudes in the low frequencies results in feeling fatigue. Low coherence in the 1 to 3 hertz range in the temporal lobes results in poor quality sleep, many sleeping disorders, and memory issues. High amplitudes in the low frequencies of the frontal poles are associated with anxiety, cravings, and addictions. High amplitudes, or hemispheric differentials in the temporal lobes, can cause depression, mood dysregulation, and physical problems related to the autonomic nervous system. Hemispheric differentials in the cerebellum often leads to hormonal problems, balance, in both men and women. Very high amplitudes in the occipital lobes correlate with migraines and headaches, while hemispheric differentials in the parietal lobes correspond with chronic pain. Each session begins by placing sensors on the scalp, just like the assessment process. This data is then converted directly into sound for the brain to listen to. We call brainwave optimization mirroring technology because we are mirroring the brain's data back to itself. By letting the brain hear its own frequencies, it is the equivalent of holding up a mirror for the brain to view itself. For the first few minutes of a session, the brain may not change much at all. It's listening to its own frequencies, much like it would listen to any other sound. But after a few minutes, we start to see remarkable things take place. Where there are differentials between the two hemispheres, these begin to come into balance. The hemisphere that is too high will begin to lower, and often the hemisphere that is too low will rise slightly. So that by the end of a protocol, these red and yellow lines are much closer to being in balance. When it comes to amplitudes in the brain that are too low, these amplitudes will begin to rise to healthier levels. Similarly, for amplitudes that are too high, we begin to see those amplitudes calm down. In many cases, we will have a combination of problems, even in a single lobe of the brain. As an example, here's a depiction of a graph for an individual who has balance problems, harmony problems, and coherence problems, all in his temporal lobes. On the first day's session, according to the red line on this graph, his right hemisphere started at nearly 30 microvolts, but finished at closer to 15. Also, you can see that the coherence, or the purple line, is very low, but has increased slightly. The coherence in the temporal lobes at this low frequency should be at a bare minimum of 25%, but ideally closer to 40%. 
Now, it would be nice if by the next session, the person was able to come back right where he left off. But often the brain likes to go back to where it was before. So, when we start the next protocol on the second day, the right hemisphere may start out closer to 25 microvolts. Not as good as when we finished up on the first day, but still better than where we were originally. By the end of the second session, it looks like the right hemisphere finished up right at 15 microvolts with the left hemisphere at 10. This is still a large imbalance and the overall amplitude needs to come down further to approximately 5 microvolts. Over the course of doing sessions, we're able to track the brain's progress. As we go into time lapse speed here, you can see that with each session that we run, the brain gets closer and closer to being in balance. The overall amplitude of those red and yellow lines is starting to come down. And very importantly for sleep function, the level of coherence is starting to rise. By the end of only 10 sessions, we have helped this lobe of the brain to relax beautifully. Some of you may be familiar with a type of technology called biofeedback or neurofeedback. And you may be wondering if brainwave optimization is the same thing. It is not. Brainwave optimization can only be considered neurofeedback in the broadest sense of the word. In a way, we're taking neurological information and feeding it back to the body. However, it's very different from traditional neurofeedback. With traditional neurofeedback, electrodes are placed on the scalp and the person is able to see their brain waves displayed on the screen. Then, a therapist or technologist will instruct the person to engage in certain mental exercises in an effort to increase or lower certain brain waves. The person is visually rewarded on the screen every time they do a good job. For the kids, this can be turned into a game. Every time the child succeeds in doing what is directed, their race car or spaceship on the screen will go faster. However, there are two main limitations with traditional neurofeedback. First of all, and perhaps most importantly, neurofeedback is not letting the brain optimize itself. Rather, it is encouraging the brain to become the average based on a normative database of other brain scans. Someone else is making the decision for how the brain should be encouraged to change. But with brainwave optimization, there is no screen. You're not trying to change anything. The focus is instead on relaxation, allowing your brain to relax and reset itself in a calm, safe space while you comfortably recline in a zero gravity chair. How likely is it that I'll really notice a difference after my sessions? This is a fair question, given that many forms of alternative medicine are not objective. In quite a contrast, we are able to see exactly what your brain looked like before and after the sessions are complete. At the end of your intensive, we give you a folder complete with before and after graphs and explain how your data has changed. Now, that's in terms of objective data. But perhaps, more importantly, those objective results translate into subjective changes as well. We have consistently seen success using brainwave optimization and consider these technologies among our most powerful tools. But we also have many who come to us not for documented disorders or conditions per se, but just because they want to feel better. After doing the sessions, our patients invariably report higher levels of quality sleep, more optimism, increased contentment, more creativity, improved alertness, memory and focus, better work performance, improved decision making. Now having said all that, it's important to keep in mind that the brain's activity is highly distributed, which means that its various functions are not just relegated to a certain lobe. A particular symptom that someone is experiencing can actually be due to a combination of balance, harmony, and coherence issues in multiple areas of the brain. Therefore, our goal is not so much to optimize specific lobes of the brain, so much as to work on optimizing the brain as a whole. Sometimes people ask, what do the sessions feel like? Or is it going to be uncomfortable listening to my own brain waves? The most common responses we get from people after their first session is that it was relaxing, comfortable, peaceful, calming. As a physician, I'm often asked, am I going to have any side effects from brainwave optimization? And sometimes it's hard to answer questions like that because it's such a paradigm shift away from medications. However, this really isn't the case with these mirroring technologies. There is nothing inherently negative that is happening. Now, having said that, 
I will say that there can often be what we call recalibration effects or adjustment reactions. We can think of this kind of like feeling a little muscle soreness after a good workout. Now the main ways in which an adjustment reaction manifests for people is either with a very slight headache or nausea. And this is simply because the electrical activity in the brain and in the enteric nervous system where the gut is, is adjusting quickly. Also, most people do report feeling a little more tired than usual for several days or even several weeks at some point during the time period of their sessions, which shouldn't be surprising because the brain is working harder than it usually does and needs to rest. And finally, perhaps the most interesting and somewhat surprising recalibration effects, to me anyway, are the emotional releases that often accompany the sessions. So this usually only takes place with the adults and not so much with the kids. And even though we call it an emotional release, there aren't usually any specific thoughts or memories that coincide. It's just something the body needs to do, almost like a cleansing as the brain is resetting itself. So how did my brain get out of balance in the first place, you might ask? And the simple answer is stress. Both physical and emotional stressors can be very hard on the brain over the course of time. Physical stressors include such things as not getting enough sleep, a poor diet, use and abuse of drugs or medications, physical injury, accidents or trauma, as well as exposure to neurotoxins in our modern environment, coupled with potential genetic predispositions which make it difficult to process those toxins. Emotional stressors, such as tension in the home or at work, can also be very taxing on the brain. Every time we encounter something stressful, whether it's an emotional stressor or a physical one, it's like the brain has to open a new program in order to handle that stressor. You see, when we can go in and close down some of those old programs, we free up more memory, so to speak, for the higher frequencies of the brain. After that, your brain is free to do a lot more heavy lifting because it's not so bogged down. So in conclusion, myself and the rest of our team believe in precision medicine here at Natural Balance. Every person in every situation is unique and we're willing to take the time to understand what is going on for you specifically and create a customized session plan designed just for you. The brain really has an amazing ability naturally to change. It's called neuroplasticity. It's something that continues to surprise and astound the medical community. Frankly, it even surprises us at our medical center and we see it every day. We've seen many patients with different concerns. Maybe you've had a recent physical or emotional stressor in your life. Maybe you're just lacking the energy and drive that you used to have. Or maybe you have a child who's struggling at home or in school. If this sounds like something that you or your loved one could benefit from, give us a call. We'd be happy to talk with you.